So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue looking at mitosis, but we're going to look a little more detail at what's called the cytoskeleton. So these are the proteins that are going to be involved in actually pulling apart the sister chromatids and directing what we view as the stages of mitosis. So before we get into it, just to put out a couple terms here, the cytoskeleton is made up of a number of different types of proteins um, that are built into these structures that line the inside of the cell. Some of them are connected to the inner cell membrane. They're called the nuclear lamina proteins. And then there are microtubules and microfilaments. We are specifically going to be looking at a part of the cytoskeleton called the microtubules. So the microtubules, to give you a little extra information, uh, are polymers of a protein called tubulin. And there are really two types of tubulin, an alpha and a beta tubulin. And they repeat uh, sort of over and over and over again to make these chains. And then the chains assemble with other chains. So I'll try to get this here quickly uh, to give you an idea. Okay. And the chains, as they assemble three-dimensionally, just give you an idea that each of these is individual, say tubulin. Um, and then they actually form a hollow tube. Okay. So the tubulin proteins are these the individual proteins that make up the chains and then the chains assemble uh, to form a structure an overall structure called a microtubule now the structures in the cell that make the microtubules are referred to as mtocs or microtubule organizing centers MTOC. Now, each cell has one MTOC, except right as we get into mitosis. So each cell is going to have to have one. So that means at some point in time before cell division, you have to double them up, just like the chromosomes. And the thing is, the two of them are the structures that are going to end up guiding the separation of the chromosomes as well. There's another term uh, called centrosome. So that's another term that's used for the MTOC. And I prefer, I just typically don't uh, use it as much. I prefer microtubule organizing center because it's very specific and, and what it is. In biology, unfortunately, we have a lot of terms that sound almost exactly alike. And they mean totally different things. And for new students learning these topics, it, they're hard enough. They're difficult enough sub subjects, the topics, and all to have a whole bunch of terms that sound, sound alike. Uh, and so if there is an option where there's another term that is accurate and is used for that. I usually prefer that term, especially when uh, introducing the topics to people as opposed to uh, intimidating them and confusing them uh, with all the, the sound alike terms. So during prophase, what's going to happen is remember, we're going we're to start to see the actual chromosomes within the nucleus. Now, every cell is going to have an MTOC. And so during this time, you're going to have you're going to end up with two MTOCs and they're going to be moving to opposite sides of the cell. So the MTOCs move to opposite poles. So it's going to be one MTOC. This is another. I'll kind of draw them to maybe star-like so we can kind of see what they look like. Now, remember, in pro-metaphase, the nuclear membrane breaks down. Actually, I'm going to draw this maybe a little bit larger. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to make it just a tiny bit bigger just because uh, we're going to start to have a bunch of different kinds of tubules uh, that we're going to look at. So I'm going to just draw a, we have a bigger cell so we can actually put these things in. Okay, we have one MTOC here, one MTOC there. So that's an MTOC. Now, the MTOCs are going to be built, and here's the, well, we've got our chromosomes, we're in pro, pro metaphase here. The MTOCs are going to produce a number of different kinds of microtubules. Now, the microtubule structure is the same, but it's sort of what they attach to that is going to um, determine the type uh, that we're talking about specifically. So, the microtubules are going to anchor themselves to the cell membrane. 
So these anchoring tubules are called aster tubules. So they're anchors. So in each MTOC is now attached to the membrane on the opposite side of the cell. The MTOCs are going to be sending out another set of microtubules that are going to connect to each other. These are tubules that go from one pole, not all the way to the other pole, but they're connected essentially to the other pole like this. So these tubules that are connected between the two MTOCs are called interpolar tubules. And now what's going to be happening is there's some action here. The interpolar tubules are going to be growing. So there's you know, more detail that could go into this. Again, this is sort of an introductory biology class. So some of this is, seems to be beyond a, a little bit of what uh, some other classes do. But uh, all of it is, is kind of necessary in the framework of understanding the basics and underlying principles of the concepts that we're trying to understand. So mitosis, for example. I don't want students to leave a class thinking that the chromosomes are just kind of floating around or swimming around on their own in the cell. That is what happens sometimes unless you start to get into some discussion of the cytoskeleton. So we need to introduce some part of the mechanism and the cellular structures that actually guide and control and regulate the process. There's a lot more detail to this. We could get into the assembly and disassembly and all the details of it, how the energy comes from GTP to be used and all these extra things, but that's really not our course that's a little more advanced cell biology. So here we're just kind of introducing again terms and their definitions and the overall process. So astrotubules anchor the MTOCs, interpolar tubules connect and they stretch out and what they're doing is they're kind of stretching the cell, kind of pulling the cell apart. And then we have the ones that we're really more focused on here, the, the ones that actually connect to the chromosome, so the sister chromatids. And we have these from each, each side of the cell. And these, all of these ones connecting to the chromosomes are called kinetochore tubules. So we have three kinds of microtubule in this process. Right? We have the astrotubules, who are the anchors, the interpolar tubules, that connect the MTOCs and are kind of stretching the cell apart. And then the kinetochore tubules that actually attach to the sister chromatids. Right? So draw this a little bit. We did this in the last uh, lecture, but now we can add in here. So there is a protein attached here at the center. So each of these are representing sister chromatids. So each one is a chromosome, a double-stranded DNA with proteins. They should be identical to one another. They'll, they are held together at a region called the centromere. That's why I see I prefer certain terms. Centrosome, centromere, people get purely confused. So MTOC, microtubule organizing center. Centromere, the region in the uh, not necessarily the center in this drawing. I did it kind of the middle of it, but uh, different chromosomes, it can be at different locations. But it's where the two sister chromatids are held together by a protein. So there's also a protein here called cohesin. So cohesin is what holds the two sister chromatids together. And now we get the interpolar tubules. Sorry, not interpolar. Kinetochore tubules, right? Kinetochore tubule coming from one MTOC. And then we're going to get another kinetochore tubule, abbreviate that, coming from another MTOC. Okay, So the kinetochore tubules come from the MTOCs. They connect to the sister chromatids at this particular region, right at their centromere, at the area where the cohesin is. And they're trying to, and then what happens is they try to pull the sister chromatids apart. So two forces are, are working at the same time. You have the force of the interpolar tubules pushing on each other, which is stretching the cell apart. And then you have the force 
of the kinetochore tubules, which are trying to pull the sister chromatids apart. But they can't get pulled apart because cohesin is holding them together. So what happens as a result of the force, all the forces acting on these chromosomes, is that they then tend to line up like this. You have the kinetochore tubules attaching to sister chromatids, like this. You have the interpolar tubules that are connecting to each other. And they are sort of stretching the cell apart. And this is where we have metaphase, right? Metaphase where they look like they're lined up in the cell. They don't line themselves up in the cell. It is the action of these proteins that pull on the sister chromatids that causes what we view as metaphase. Now, this cohesin protein, which is attached to the two of them, will keep them together, and so it will stay in metaphase as long as it's there. So the next thing that has to happen is the removal of cohesin. So there is a anaphase-promoting molecule that will be a signal that will bind to that cohesin and remove it. Right? When that signal is released, then we can move on to anaphase and actually separate them. So at that point in time, when cohesin is removed, the action can actually take place where kinetochore tubules will shorten and the interpolar tubules will elongate and there will appear to be action where the sister chromatids have now been pulled apart and they're moving to opposite sides of the cell. So you'll actually see movement. Now, when you look at these in a lab, say under a slide, you're not going to see the movement because the cells are dead. The cells have been fixed um, with chemicals that kill them and preserve the proteins uh, at some particular stage in time. And if it, you're lucky, it happens to capture the cells right at anaphase. And so you can see them at some point in this division process. And so you can actually see the sister chromatids pulled apart. This is, though, a stage of action, so it is a movement section. So looking at videos that actually show the action or movement of the chromosomes apart are important. Sometimes you'll see the action of the tubules in those videos. Sometimes you don't, and it really appears more like the, the um, chromosomes are separating themselves. So the real emphasis here, the point is that there are microtubules, which are these complex proteins or, or polymers of protein called tubulin, uh, that... Uh, are organized by structures within the cell called MTOCs, microtubule organizing centers. They bind to the sister chromatids and they bind to the cell membrane and they bind to each other. So we have the different types and then they are responsible for regulating and controlling and forming the different stages of, of mitosis. Um, so just make sure you know the terms, you know the, the, the names of the different types and their, each of their jobs of what they do. And if you, if you do that, then again, you'll be in pretty good shape. Um, like I said, there's a lot more detail that can be added to this. But as an introduction to the topic, these are the essentials of what you would need to know.